and hello welcome to prebytes this is mahati and in this video we're going to see another basic uh, basic coding question which is converting an integer into roman and vice versa which means roman to integer so before conversion before getting into the actual conversion let's just see some denotions right which we do in roman numbers so we denote one as i right five as v then x as 10 then we have l as 50 then c as 100 then we have d as 500 and m as 1000 so this is our denotation now before actually going and converting any number into roman or whenever you are dealing with the roman numbers you may we should make sure that we already know these denotations right now if i start going with you know example which was given as like 238 now what will i do how should we actually go and convert it into a roman number right now let's just say i have this number 238 what will i going to go and do is whenever we are dealing with this conversion we have to uh, move upwards which means i'll start from m to i so first what i'll do is i'll go and divide 238 by m so i'll have a quotient of 0 and a remainder of 238 right now again i'll take this remainder and i'll divide it with the next one which is d so 500 i'll be again getting a quotient of 0 and a remainder of 238 right now again i'll take this remainder and divide it with 100 which is our c i'll have a quotient of 2 and a remainder of 38 now again i'll go and take that remainder and divide it with l so 38 divided by l which will give a quotient of 0 and a remainder of 38 again right again i'll go and divide 38 with r x so 38 divided by x which will give us a quotient of 0 and a remainder of 8 now again i'll go with this take the 8 whichever remain uh, you know then i'll divide it with 5 now i'll have a quotient of 1 and a remainder of 3 right again i'll go take this remainder 3 and divide it with i which is 1 so i'll have a quotient of 3 and a remainder of 0 so what a, what you need to do is you have to you know repeat this process repeat this loop of process until unless you'll get the remainder 0 right now ignore all those quotients where you have 0 right now you have 2 1 and 3 we are we going to focus on these things right one's this one and the other is this one and the other is this one now what will i will be having is you can see that where i got the quotient to i have divided that particular number with c so which means i have to write c for two times so right i wrote c for two times here c for two times now you can see that my other case in which i have a quotient of 1 i have divided with v which means 5 so i have to write v for one time right again now you can see this case where i where i have divided the remainder with i which means 1 and my quotient is 3 so i have to write 3 times i so you can see so okay um sorry so yahan par hum logo ne ek like we wrote something wrong so here you can see that i have divided 38 with 10 which means my quotient will be 3 so we have to consider this case as well so again i'll start writing so here we can see that i have quotient 2 when i'm dividing with c which means i have to write two c's right now again you can see this case where i have divided my 38 with 10 which means i have you know i have quotient of 3 so i have to write three x's right uh, then you can see that i have divided my 8 with 5 and i have a quotient 1 which means i have to write one v and the last case in which i have quotient as 3 and i have divided with i so i'll be writing i three times so this is our 238 right so this is fine now let's just start doing this the second you know the exception case now 
give me a second where I'll just go and delete all of this. Yep. Now, now let's just uh, take 97. The same goes. So I'm dividing my 97 by M, which means I'm getting a quotient of 0 and remainder of 97. Right? Again, I'm going to take this remainder and divide it with D. Again, I'm getting a quotient of 0 and a remainder of 97. Then I'm again, I'm taking it and dividing it with 100, which is our C. And I'll be having a quotient of 0 and a remainder of 97 again. I'm going to go and divide 97 with L. So, in which I'll get a quotient of 1 and a remainder of, you know, 47, right? Again, I'm going to take this remainder, 47 divided by x, right? So, I'll have a quotient of 4 and a remainder of 7. Then again, I'm going to go and divide this 7 by v, which will give me a quotient of 1 and a remainder of 2. Then I'm going to divide this 2 with i, which will give me a quotient of 2 and remainder of 0. Now we'll go and do the same thing. Look, I have to consider this case, this case, this case, and last four cases we need to consider. Now, what will be my output if I'll go with the, you know, same similar type of the, how we actually wrote those Roman denotions. So in this case, I've divided with L. So I'll be writing L. Now, after that, I have 4 quotient as 4 and I'm dividing with x. So, I'll be writing 4x, right? After that, I have quotient as 1. So, I'll write 1v, then 2, that means 2i. Now, you can see that this is what uh, the output I've got whatever uh, with the whatever the process we have done with 238 and this is the actual output. Now, how this is possible? So generally, whenever we are dealing with Roman numbers, you have to keep it in mind. For example, here you can see that I have V as 5, right? So whenever I'm going to write less number than 5, which is let's just say 4, I cannot, you know, all we have to do is we have to write a number on its left side. For example, if I'll write 1 here, so which means the 5 you know, the 1 will get subtracted from the 5. So, this is a normal rule in the Roman number. So, if, if you want to actually subtract, if you want to less any number from the existing number, you have to write that particular number before this. So, I want 4. So, which means 5 minus 1 would be 4. Would be 4. So, I have to write 1 before 5. So, that's why I will be writing I and 4. Right? So, same case goes on with 97 as well. Right? So, for 97, see, all we have to take is 100 because it's the closest number to 100. So, I'm going to take C. Now, I have to get the 90s row. So, what will I do is, I'll minus 10. Right? So, which means I have to write X before C. Right? And now, this value is what? 90. Right? But I want 97. So, if you are writing any number to the left side of the existing number, it will get, you know, it will have the difference. But if you want to add something, you have to go and write it on your right side. So, which means I will be writing here, I want 7, which means I will be writing here 7. So, this will be our 97. So, this is one of the, you know, that case where the exception goes off. Now, we'll let's just understand the code, how we are going to do that, right? Okay. So, uh, the first step itself, we got L, but we know that the, the output we need doesn't have L. So, there are these special cases. Now, how these special cases are defined? So, generally, whenever we write Roman, num uh, Roman numbers, you can see the 238 as well. So, we have C, C, you know, triple X and V, I, 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 which means I have uh, whatever the uh, numbers we have written are actually decrementing from left to right. Right, you can see it is 100, C is 100, then it became 10, then it is 5, then 1, 1, 1. 
so generally the uh, the numbers are decrementing from left to right so this is one of the important point why because whenever we write some expressions for the special cases for example like 97 right if 97 how gonna we you know how actually we gonna write so we gonna go to the closest number where we get the denotation which means 100 which is c right now this is my number now this is the closest like it's just we gonna have to subtract 3 i think so right now how to actually denote this number i have 100 so whatever number i'm gonna write to the left of c actually get subtracted from c so i'm gonna go and subtract x from c now which means i have 100 and i have subtracted 10 so the value i'll get is 90 right now i want seven more numbers to actually make it you know 97 so what i'm going to do now i have already told you that if i write something on the left side it will get subtracted from the actual number so same thing goes when i'll write something in the right side it will get added to that particular number so i need seven more so i'll be writing seven here which means my in from my 100 9 was subtracted to give me 90 and 7 was added to give me 97 so these are some special kind of cases such as you know uh, for example let's just take a small uh, simple number which is 4 right so if i want to write 4 normally i have to write four i's which is not correct which is not you know so if i want to write an actual roman number what i'll do i'll write five and i'll subtract one number so which means i'll write a one to its left side same as 9 if i want to write 9 uh, uh, normally so i have to write four i's after v right then what time going to write here i have to write 10 and subtract 1 same will take 90 which means i have to write c and i have to minus x right then 400 which means l and i have to subtract uh, sorry it's not l it's d which means i have to subtract 100 again so i'll be subtracting c so which will be my 400 then you can see 900 there are so many numbers so many exceptional cases which are differently built so that's why for this exception case to work we need a different code so let's just analyze the code let's just see the code okay now in this code you can see we have taken all those exceptional cases along as arrays then we'll start comparing it as soon as we are comparing it we get that um give me yep okay now you can see that i have a loop here which starts from which goes from 0 to 13 so the loop goes from 0 to 13 comparing the values whenever i'll get a number which is less than whatever the whenever i get the value which is less than the actual number i'll subtract that particular number so i'm going to just explain this code uh i'm just going to explain this code just a bit to show you so whatever happens is so i actually goes from 0 to 13 right my number is 238 it will compare all the values in the array so once whatever the number it will get from this array is less than 238 for example i have 238 and the number i got in the array is 100 which is less than right so it will go and minus that 100 so as i decremented that 100 from the actual number i got my one roman value which is c right so that's how this code going to work right how that's how this code going to work and that's how the numbers going to go i'm going to just quickly show you how this going to write you can see the values are changing here the cc and triple x then you will get a v which is 5 and 1 1 1 that is how we gonna write right same thing goes with 97 as well now we gonna go the vice versa thing which means let's just you know go and convert whatever the roman number we have into an integer number so let's just say i have 97 right which is x c v11 right but this is our 97 now we have converted the roman to integer right uh, sorry integer to roman now we'll do roman to integer okay so uh, till now we have discussed about converting an 
you know integer into roman now we'll go the reverse one which is roman to integer let's just say uh, take the same example which is our 97 now how we actually write 97 is x c v 11 now how we going to convert it so before actually going into conversation i've already told you that whenever we are dealing with the roman numbers it is evident that as soon as we'll go from left to right the value actually decrements right you can see we have taken um, c c triple x the 238 one example right you can see it c is means 100 then x means 10 5 1 1 so the value is actually decrementing from left to right right so as 97 is one of a special case and we uh, by the process when we used the reminder and a quotient thing we you know we got a lengthier one right now how to convert this things which means first what will i do i'll go and compare two elements two adjacent elements i already told you if the value is decrementing from left to right it's fine the sum is adding up but if the value is incrementing then it means the previous number will get subtracted from the current number now how this works so in this particular example right which is 97 i'm going to go and take first two elements which are x and c now i'll compare these two elements now you can see that my c is greater than x right which means my first number is greater than so my first number is lesser than less than second number so what will happen is i have to take a difference of them so which means i'll minus 100 minus uh, i'll do 100 minus 10 in which i'll get 90 right so this will be my current sum right now i'll go go with the second number and the third number same adjacent numbers i'll start comparing it comparing them again so in which i can see that my c is greater than 5 right so already i have a current sum which is 90 so i have already told you if the if there is a decrement as soon as we'll go from left to right we'll add up right we'll uh, you know we'll add them so i'll add 90 plus 5 which is 95 right now again i'll go and compare v and i the v and first i so as soon as i got to know that v is greater than i i'll go and add one more number which is 96 and then go add one more number because you know i've compared i and i and there is a case where it can be greater than equal to as well so if there is greater and equal to you have to add it up if there is a you know increment of sudden increment uh, as i told you you can see the first case where x was actually less than c right then we gonna go and do the uh, subtraction thing so again i'm gonna add a number which is 97 So this is how we're gonna convert. Now let me show you how the code actually works. Yeah. <clears throat> Now the same thing. Whatever we have done, whatever we have, you know. So we have given that we have a switch case here where I've already told the notations. Like if there is this particular Roman number, this particular Roman symbol is there, I have to return. The compiler has to return these values. Whatever the notions we have known. right so it will go and then it's a simple loop running just comparing the adjacent numbers doing the same cases where if the if the first number is greater than the second number then it will go add and up if it's not then it will get subtracted so that is how we going to go i hope you understand uh thank you please do subscribe like and share the video